Congratulations. Thank you for purchasing a Skosh amplifier. Skosh amplifiers are versatile, state-of-the-art, and built to last. Your new amplifier, while being sophisticated, is very easy to install. This DVD will take you step-by-step step through the entire process. First, we want to make sure you have everything you'll need to install your amplifier. You can get all the things you will need in an amplifier wiring kit. The Skosh KPA8 is perfect for this application. The Skosh amplifier wiring kit we will be using includes a 17-foot piece of 8-gauge wire with a fuse for the main power, an 8-gauge wire for the ground, a 17-foot 18-gauge piece of wire for your turn-on lead, a 17-foot RCA cable to send the audio signal from your radio to the amp, and most of the hardware you may need. You will also need speaker wire to run from the amp to your sub or speakers. This is not included in the amp kit. Scotia's KST-1430P is perfect for this. Next, check to see if you have all necessary tools on hand. At a minimum, this is what you'll need. Wire strippers or cutters, drill and drill bits, electrical tape, wire ties, a multimeter, wire crimpers, a screwdriver, and a cordless telephone. You may want to call us. Now let's look at the radio in your car. What kind is it? Basically, there are two types of radios. The factory head unit, which is the radio that came with the car, or an aftermarket head unit, which is a radio you have installed like a Sony or another brand. If you have a factory unit, wiring will be different. So, if you have a question, please call Scotia's Technical Support Department. Let's start with where you plan to mount the amplifier. A couple of things to keep in mind while you find a location. The amp will generate heat, so do not cover the amp with carpet or anything else that will not let air flow across the amp. You'll also need to access the amp's fuses and controls. Be sure to give yourself enough room to attach wire and make adjustments. Check the area where the amplifier will be mounted and be sure it is free of wiring, brake lines, or fuel lines that may be in the way. Don't forget to look underneath the area where you may be drilling. Next, make sure you'll be able to connect all the necessary wires to the amp. This is a good time to find a place to ground the amp. We'll want this as close to the amp as possible. After you've chosen your mounting location, plan how you are going to get the power lead from the battery to the amp, how you will route the RCA interconnects and turn on lead from the head unit to the amp, and how you plan to run speaker wire to your sub or speakers. Also, we do not want the RCAs and the power wire run next to each other. This is a potential source for system noise. Our system wiring begins with the 12-volt main power lead. Leave the amp where you are going to mount it, and let's go to the battery of your car. For our purposes, we'll assume your battery is under your hood. Let's disconnect the negative terminal of your battery. This may be labeled minus. This way, we will not get shocked or damage anything while we are installing the system. Take the power wire from the amp kit and remove the fuse from the inline fuse holder. If you are using a different amp kit or another type of fuse holder, be sure there is no fuse in place. We will want to be sure this wire is fused as close to the battery as possible. This way, if there is ever a short on the wire or a problem with the amp, the fuse will blow at the power source, which is your car battery. Without going into too much detail, the fuse is the safety valve of the system, and its use is extremely important from a protection standpoint. <laughs> Let's move on to wire routing. Plan how you are going to run the power wire through the engine compartment and ultimately into the car's interior. Let's be sure your wire won't come in contact with anything that will get hot or move. Also, make sure it's neatly secured and out of the way. Next, find an area where you can run the wire from the engine compartment through the firewall. You will need to drill a hole and use the supplied grommet in the amplifier wiring kit. You may be asking yourself, what's a grommet? It is a plastic or rubber ring that protects wiring when run through a metal hole. Remember to try and drill a hole on the battery side of the firewall. Check both sides of the firewall and be careful not to drill into anything. 
<coughs> Insert the grommet and then run the non-fused end of your power wire through the grommet to the inside of the car and back to the amp. Carefully remove any panels needed to gain access to where the power wire will run. Typically, you will need to remove the kick panel, door sill, and possibly the rear seat. Once the wire has reached the amp, let's go through and secure the wire with tie wraps and add the split loom to cover the wire section under the hood. This is a good time to double check to make sure our wire is not going to be in the way of any moving parts. Remember the seat moves, so make sure the seat will not come in contact with the wire. Now let's make up the wire loom that will run from the radio to the amplifier. This loom will contain the RCA cables and the turn-on lead. Wrap the RCA cables and the blue turn-on wire together using electrical tape or tie wraps. Next, remove the radio using either the supplied removal tools or disassemble the dash to gain access to the mount securing the radio. Now, there are as many mounting methods as there are radios, so if you have questions on how to remove your radio, consult the radio's manual or call Skosh Tech Support Staff. We'll gladly talk you through this or we'll send you the information you'll need. Once you have the radio out, you will need to connect the turn-on lead and RCA interconnects to your radio. So now let's locate the turn-on lead and the RCAs. The turn-on lead will either be labeled REM for remote or amp turn-on. If you are not sure, check the installation manual for the radio. Now connect the turn-on lead. Now locate the audio outputs at the rear of your deck where the RCAs are going to go. You'll need to be sure to make a note of which is right and which is left. If your radio does not have the RCA connections or if you need any assistance at all, call Scotia's Tech Support Department. We're here for you. Continue to route your wire loom through the car and on to the amp's mounting location. Remember, we want this to be routed separately from the power wire. A good rule of thumb is to try to keep these at least 9 inches away from the power wire. Routing the signal loom on the opposite side of the car from the power wires is always the preferred method. Next, we will connect the speakers. Now before we forget, let's go ahead and connect your speaker wire to your speakers or subwoofer and run this to your amplifier. Make sure you note which side on the wire you connect to the positive and negative terminals of the speaker. Depending on how you're using the amp, this may be different. Now that we have all the necessary wiring at the amp, let's mount the amp. We've checked the area to be sure it's safe, so now let's drill some pilot holes and run the screws through. <laughs> Now that your amp is firmly mounted, let's move on to the connection process, starting with the all-important ground wire. Without a well-connected ground wire, the amp may not work or it may produce system noise. So let's locate a clean, bare metal surface in the car, preferably on the frame. If any paint needs to be removed, just use a wire brush or sandpaper. Drill a proper sized hole and then crimp a terminal to one end of the ground wire and secure your ground to the mounting point. Then, crimp a spade terminal to the other end of the wire and connect this to the amplifier on the terminal labeled GND. Now we will connect our remote turn-on lead and the RCA inputs from the loom we made earlier. Crimp a spade terminal to the end of the blue wire and connect this to the amp on the terminal labeled REM. The RCAs are going to bring the audio signal from the radio to your amp. Make sure the right and left are correct. Plug these into your amp. Next, we will connect the speakers. Depending on how you are using the amp, this may be different. We are bridging our amp for maximum power. 
Connect the positive speaker wire to the terminal labeled R+, and the negative speaker wire to the terminal labeled L-. To wire two speakers, connect the right speaker positive wire to the terminal labeled R+, and the right speaker negative wire to the terminal labeled R-. Then connect the left speaker positive to the terminal labeled L+, and the left speaker negative to the terminal labeled L-. For more information on speaker wiring, take a look in the manual that came with your amp. Lastly, crimp a spade terminal on the end of the power wire and connect it to the terminal labeled plus 12V. Now double check all of your connections and wire you have routed through the car. Before we put the fuse in, let's make a couple of adjustments to our amp. If the amp is running a subwoofer, switch the filter to low. If you are running a pair of stereo speakers, switch the selector to off. Rotate the level control all the way to min. At this point, we can now install the fuse in the inline holder and reconnect the negative terminal of the battery. Next, turn on the radio. With the radio on, the amp's green light should be on. If so, great. If not, Go to the troubleshooting section. Now turn the radio's volume knob up to normal listening level, and then go to your amp. Starting very slowly, turn the level control from the min setting towards the max. Listen to your speakers as you turn the adjustment knob. The speakers should sound clear without distorting. Once you have this set, we can adjust our sound a little more. If you have subwoofers installed, set the filter switch to low. The subwoofers should sound deeper. Depending on the size of the subwoofers and your personal taste, adjust the crossover switch to either 80 Hz or 120 Hz. Now for the bass boost switch. Again, depending on your personal taste and the type of music you listen to, set the bass boost switch to 0 dB flat response or plus 6 dB to get more low frequency bass. This will increase the volume of the bass at 50 Hz. The subwoofers will sound louder. Some words of caution. Never adjust the gain or bass boost to the point where you hear distortion. This will damage your amplifier and speakers, so be sure to read all of the information that came with the speakers for recommended frequency and power handling limitations. Let's go through the car and be sure we have replaced everything we took apart to run our wires. Next, let's replace the radio. Good work. If you are not getting sound, go ahead to the troubleshooting section of this DVD. Remember, call Skosh Tech Support if you have any questions. Again, congratulations on buying your Skosh amplifier. Now go out and enjoy it. Live a little. Crank it up. <laughs>